Are you too focused on what your life should look like instead of focusing on how your life actually feels? Welcome to the Search for Serotonin podcast, a podcast all about letting go of what you thought your life would look like and embracing your life for exactly what it is. Hi, I'm Carolyn, and this podcast is my audio diary where I share the struggles of being in your 20s, what going to therapy really looks like, and what it's like to live with severe high-functioning anxiety, clinical depression, and perfectionism. We all battle our own demons, but we shouldn't feel alone because of it. If you feel like you're not good enough or that you're behind in life, then let's start searching for serotonin together. Welcome to the search committee. Hey there, serotonin searchers. Welcome back to another episode of the search for serotonin podcast. This is your host, Carolyn Farrick. And this week, I am joined by a very special guest. I am so excited to be talking to this guest because she is actually somebody who I started following at the beginning of my journey. I have always looked up to her. I've always followed her stuff, interacted with her online. And so having the chance to sit down and talk to her face-to-face tonight about her journey with anxiety, and everything that she does online to advocate for mental health. So tonight I am joined by Jamie Barmakian, who is the Mindful Millennial. You can find her online as the Mindful Millennial. She shares her experiences coping with anxiety through spirituality. She shares how she practices mindfulness and how she heals through nature. So Jamie, thank you so much for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, thanks so much for inviting me on. I like feel like we have a lot of similarities based on our content. So it's cool that we get to finally connect. Yes, yes. And I am so excited to hear more about your journey and kind of hear where you came from, how you started the Mindful Millennial and kind of how you got to where you are today. So if you just want to take a minute and tell the listeners a little bit about you, about your background with anxiety and just whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Yeah. So I started the Mindful Millennial in 2017, just because I like, I was just wanting to share my like anxiety. Like I've had anxiety my whole life. So I've been wanting to share my tips and tricks and things that were working for me and just kind of wanted to start breaking the stigma around mental health and just like so other people didn't feel alone and yeah so I've just been doing that for I guess five-ish years now which is crazy to think about but um, I've learned so much along the way just from like watching other people's content and making mine and that's honestly like where my whole mental like mindfulness journey kind of began because before I was just like not really handling my anxiety well at all and now I feel like I've learned a lot and can cope with it better yeah that's awesome so you just started out as somebody who was struggling and you were just kind of like maybe I can share this with other people and see if it makes me feel better if it makes other people feel better is that kind of how you approach starting your Instagram yeah it yeah I don't know like it was kind of around the time when people were making like little blogs and stuff and I just always liked like I used to love Tumblr and stuff and just like making collages like just creative outlets so I was kind of using it as that but in when middle school I was diagnosed and I was just like struggling with it a lot after college especially because just like trying to find a job and all the pressure and you're just like thrown into life and you're like what's going on and I was just like I had like a lot of financial anxiety and like social anxiety and just like everything so I don't even know how I found like I started doing mindful stuff though I think like my mom gave me the power of now once you know that book I have not heard of it no it's by Eckhart Tolle and it's it just changed my my life basically like so I just kind of I guess it started around then. No, I'll have to definitely check that out because I am very much at a point in my journey where I'm like, 
I'm trying to read all the self-help books. I'm trying to do everything that I see, anything that could potentially help. Um, so mm -hmm. when you started your journey and you started sharing, did that create more anxiety for you? Or did you feel like it reduced your anxiety because it helped connect you to others? Or what was that kind of starting period like for you? Yeah, so at first I just, I think I was just like, this is how I'm feeling and I don't really care. I think I was like, I don't think anyone's really going to see, like pay attention to this. So then I was just kind of using it as like a journal. But then people started write, like commenting and saying that they feel the same way. And then I was like, okay, I should keep doing this. I, it honestly felt better for me, not really for other people. Cause I was like, oh, other people are dealing with this. And then I was like, okay, obviously. And then I was like, I should just keep posting more because I want other people to kind of feel like they have, they can, they won't feel alone and they can talk about their problems too. And it's just like, you know, like a whole societal issue. Also like recently, one of my bosses follows me and I was like, oh shoot, when he followed me, because I was like, he's gonna think I am mentally unstable. But then he, like, once I posted, like, oh, I'm having anxiety today, like, I'm having a panic attack. And he was like, oh, no, like, but I was talking to him earlier that day, and I was acting, like, normal, obviously. And then he's he was like, are you okay? Like, I, you didn't have to talk to me earlier. Like, and I was like, I had to, like, explain to him, like, this is just, like, my outlet, like, please don't feel like you need to like take care of me via here. Like this is separate. So yeah. I sometimes, you know, you got to say that disclaimer. Yeah, no, for sure. And I'm glad you actually brought up your place of work because I know you do post a lot about, you know, saying when you go into the office that you feel anxious mm -hmm. and you're very open about that. So I was wondering yeah. if you could talk a little bit about workplace anxiety. I know I have some people who, listen, who are in like the corporate world, do a nine to five, go into the office still, everything like that. So what kind of do you experience when you're feeling anxious at work and how have you kind of learned to cope through it or what really helps you when you're getting anxious during work? Yeah, this is like a big one for me. So during work, I used to not really realize that it was anxiety and I kind of just like, I just feel uncomfortable and weird here, but I now that I've like thought about it a lot, I think the pandemic really helped because I just was away from it for so long. So then I like thought back on it and I was like, that was kind of weird. I just think it was a lot of social anxiety, really. Like I felt like I had to act some, some way else to like be there. And it just felt like icky and like weird to me. And I always felt like, like I have like, I was more afraid of like my bosses or like authority figures like saying I did something wrong but that's also like past trauma with like bad jobs and just unhealthy work environments so now the job I have is like healthy but even then like I remember when like zoom was introduced like I was like what I don't want to be like talking like I don't want anyone to see my house I don't want my boss to see me I don't know like this is weird like what do I do with my face and um yeah like I would have to take anxiety meds sometimes just to have like one meeting with my boss and I was like freaking out all day about it and I think that was kind of like a social anxiety kind of kind of thing but I've gotten better at it just like by like being like I don't know I guess just exposure like doing it more it's like fine now to me they are asking me to go back in the office and I was just like having panic attacks and freaking out about it and I also think it's like the commuting and just the whole thing and like dressing a certain way um I started like freaking out about it so I told my psychiatrist and he was like he wrote me a doctor's note 
And I talked to my boss about it and they said I can work from home. So there's hope out there for everyone. You can manifest your reality. Everything is available to you. Just speak your truth. <laughs> yes. No, I love that. I love that your psychiatrist was able to write you a doctor's note. I've never heard of anyone yeah. doing that. I know. I don't know. I guess it's a thing. I like, it was a long shot. I asked him and I've been a patient with him for years. So I think it was pretty legitimate. It's not like I'm making this up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I worked um, at like a nine to five job a year ago before I started this journey And it was the same thing for me where, you know, Zoom calls, I got so anxious because I'm like, I have to have the perfect background. I have to make it look like I'm professional or like, you know, all that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. It's that added extra stress, but then also like the going into the office piece and being like a full-time employee, I felt a lot of imposter syndrome. Like I felt like I didn't belong there. Everyone was like more qualified, more knowledgeable, like knew what they were Mm. doing. And that's why I actually left working in person and, you know, all that kind of stuff, because it did heighten my anxiety so bad. So I definitely understand how you're saying, like, putting together outfits, being in the office, interacting with people. It's a lot of pressure, especially if you do struggle with anxiety, that a lot of other people don't really understand sometimes. It's like you're putting on a different persona. And it's kind of it. When I'm doing that, I just feel like I'm moving backwards. like. I grew to be this person that I am now mentally healthy. And if I was going to go back that way, like, it just seems like, like, why, why am I doing that? That doesn't fit. That doesn't align with me, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's how I felt too. You know, like I I have a personality disorder. So that was really conflicting for me because at work I had to be this person. And then at home I was this person. And then it's all these different versions of mm. you. And you kind of feel like, where is me in all of this? Like, who actually am I? So that got a little overwhelming on my end, which is why I was like, it's not for me. I need to step back and find something else. But it's nice to hear yeah. that other people go through that as well and kind of have those same like thought processes. Yeah. I'm always like telling my friends, like, I can't go back in the office. I can't do it. I can't do it. And they're like, oh, it's not that bad. You get used to it. I'm like, no, no, seriously, I can't do it. I'm never doing it again. <laughs> yes. So hopefully that never happens. <laughs> So you mm-hmm. mentioned your psychiatrist and you said that you've been working with your psychiatrist for a couple of years now. Um, mm-hmm. So do you take anti-anxiety medication? Yeah, I actually, so I was on them in middle school for like test anxiety, which, okay. cause I would freak out about like grades and studying and I thought it was the end of the world. So I was on Zoloft back then, and then I went off it in high school, and then I went back on it, like, in the middle of college, maybe, or, like, end, and, yeah, well, my experience with that was, like, after college, I was, like, super depressed and anxious, like, worst it's ever been, because I couldn't find a job for a really long time, or I wasn't, like, getting paid the right amount of money and it was just like unstable and really stressful and then I was on like a lot of a high dosage of Zoloft and then it wasn't working at all and then my current psychiatrist is awesome and he was like that doesn't make any sense that you were on like such a high dose and it wasn't working like we should just switch it and so we switched it to like Lexapro and now I'm like on the lowest dose and it's going really well I didn't even know you could switch or anything so yeah I don't know I just was like always on that my whole life so then when I switched I was like I don't know about this but then it was way better and yeah and then I also like just have like Xanax and stuff in case I have a panic attack so that like I don't really like taking it but if it's a bad day, it's really helpful to have. Let's talk a little bit about spirituality. So you say you're coping with anxiety through spirituality. So can you talk a little bit about what spirituality looks like to you and what kind of things you practice or do to help with your anxiety? Yeah. So I think 
it's kind of started well when I started my little Instagram account. Um, I think I started kind of just getting into mindfulness then and then it kind of transitioned to spirituality. But um, I've always like liked yoga since college. I've been practicing, which I think I like has always helped with my anxiety. So I was just kind of starting there and then I got into meditation. It means kind of just believing that everything is going to work out. I, I like to work with the moon phases, like full moon, release everything, new moon, write down your goals. Um, really into manifesting. Um, I like crystals and just like sound baths, meditating, all of that like relaxing stuff. And I just started like doing it and learning about it through Instagram, really. And then now I'm just like obsessed. Like it's my favorite thing. <laughs> I love when you post like any spiritual related content, anything about crystals, anything about the new moons, birth charts, tarot cards, any of it, because I am such a fan of that as well. And I've learned everything through Instagram, TikTok, being online, being exposed to that through other people. And with my anxiety, I find it really helpful because to me, looking at a tarot reading or, you know, looking at your birth chart or looking at what's going to happen in a new moon, you know, those kinds of things are kind of like, predictability and it's like oh this is what this means or this is what you can expect or things like that mm -hmm. and so for me having that reassurance of okay I know what's going to happen it makes me feel a little bit better in like my own anxiety so is that maybe something that draws you to spirituality or what's attracted to about it to you yeah definitely like it it has like changed my anxiety on so many levels so like I started meditating for 10 minutes a day. I just realized that like, if I did that for 10 minutes a day, that I was more in control of my thoughts because I like trained my brain to realize like, this is anxiety, this is anxiety. Like this isn't real. Because if I don't practice meditation, then it's hard to tell. There's like a fine line of like, what is anxiety and what isn't. And in, when you're meditating, you're just constantly trying to focus. So you're just way more aware of everything. And like, as crazy as it sounds, I am really good at it somehow. And I, but I used to not be. And when I was having anxiety or you, I felt out of control, like I would just be like, all right, well, I'm going to manifest a new life right now. And just like write everything down and I would I did like tried so hard to learn everything I possibly could about it and then I saw it finally like things coming to light that I wanted and then once you realize that you can manifest something you're just like okay well now I can manifest the next thing and then you're just like believing you can and that's like a huge part of it so you're putting that energy out and then you're receiving back because you're on that same frequency. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a lot of the thing with manifestation that I kind of struggle with sometimes is thinking of what you want, really focusing on that, but then like fully releasing it and just trusting that the universe is going to happen because with my anxiety, I'm like, no, I want to make it mm -hmm. all happen. I want to be in control. So do you ever find yourself kind of struggling to release when you're manifesting? And if so, like, how do you kind of work through that? Yeah. So I used to do that a lot, like when I was first getting into it and I was just like, why? Because I was trying to find a job and I was trying for like a really long time and nothing was working. So I was like so defeated and like just in bad, like a negative spiral. This is what happened. I did something that I was really afraid to do and I just did it. And I was like, whatever, like, we're just going to do it. And then that's when everything started happening. And what I did was I like just left my house and drove to Colorado and lived out of my car for a month oh my gosh <laughs> I was just like I'm done with all of this 
I'm depressed. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. <laughs> and it like changed my life because then I met all these people. I was like, had such a different perspective. I've never lived outside of my house, like my parents' house before that. And it was just like, and then I was like really in nature because I was visiting like national parks. So just like, I really think like nature really helps too, which is like, another thing that just really calms me because if you think like sometimes I get myself so worked up on stuff and I'm like if you had nothing but nature you would you'd be happy and you'd be fine so it's fine like it's just like a reminder um but then after that I came home like a month later and I got a new apartment a new job everything just was like okay now you can have it you did what you were afraid to do like because I was always dreaming like I want to get out of here I want to live in my car like I don't know why I really wanted to do that for some reason so you know like sometimes you just have to just like whatever like get so mad about it that you're just like whatever and then the universe is like okay good job you you did some stuff and now we're going to reward you, you have to be like, okay, something better is coming because it just is like, there's a reason this is happening. I don't know. That's how I get through everything. It's super spiritual. And like, probably if you don't believe in any of that stuff, you're probably like, this is so stupid and that's not going to work, but like, okay, well, it's working for me. (laughs) yeah yeah and I think how you framed it is really perfect because you have to almost like pull yourself out of that and look at it objectively and say yeah I might be in deep shit right now and everything kind of fucking sucks but like that bad thing happened like a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago or a couple years ago and I got through it and it all worked out so why not the same for this situation and it can be really Mm -hmm. hard with anxiety to have that mentality and bring yourself out of that but if you are able to get to a point where you can be like oh wait no this isn't all bad because something good will come because it's just going to kind of like you said yeah and like normally I would just spiral and go insane but like it's also back to the meditation thing like I'm able to realize in my head instead of spiraling like okay this is sucks but it's not going to be forever. And when, if I think back on it, like a lot of better, like usually when I'm in these situations, there's a better outcome than there was before. So let's talk about crystals. So if you want to share what crystals you use, some of your favorites and which ones you'd recommend specifically for anxiety. Okay. Yes, I love crystals. They're my favorite. Um, I have a million crystals, so I don't really know which ones like are my like to say, but my favorite ones and some that are really good for anxiety is amethyst. It really helps. Sometimes I'll just fall asleep. Like if I'm having trouble sleeping, I'll hold one and I just fall asleep with it in my hand because it's so good for sleep dreams and just like calming sensations and then petrified wood I really like because it's um really grounding so if you have a lot of anxiety I think it's really good because it just brings you back down to earth a lot and I it's like really powerful I can feel it working um also another good one that's similar to that for grounding black tourmaline really grounding that's like one of the first crystals somebody gave me once and I realized it was working because I would feel my feet heavy and I never told like she didn't tell me it was for grounding or anything and then after she was like how do you feel I was like my feet I can feel it and she's like yeah it's grounding crystal so ever since then I've been really obsessed with working with crystals (laughs) nice that's awesome I definitely need some for grounding so I'm gonna check those out for sure (laughs) yeah and there's like you'll see on my 
on my Instagram, I post a lot like crystals for anxiety, crystals for depression. So I'll try to post some more soon and you guys can follow along. So what are some tips that you would give to anybody who is out there struggling maybe with anxiety, maybe they're struggling to practice mindfulness, or maybe they're just struggling to um, manifest or anything like that? What kind of advice would you give to people? Yeah, um, well, I say first start by meditating 10 minutes a day, see if it does anything for you. 10 minutes is so easy to set aside that time, even if you're just People say like, oh, I'm busy at work. I've literally meditated at my desk a bunch of times before. And it's a 10 minute break. You're allowed to have a break Um, throughout the day. Let yourself relax Um, or before bed or in the morning. It's great. Um, And how I started doing that, I couldn't afford any of like the meditation apps when I first started. So I would just YouTube like meditation and there's a million meditations on there for free also um some apps I really like the daily calm app I mean just calm app and they have the daily calm which is 10 minutes a day I would highly suggest like moving your body or like working out even if you're just going on a walk outside especially now during seasonal depression season with manifesting you know, just try to catch yourself when you're t- speaking negatively, even if you're, it's in your head, or even if you say it to yourself, like I was thinking about this the other day, I used to always say like, oh, my life is such a joke. But then I, and that was when I was like, super depressed. And that means like, I'm just bringing that upon myself. So just like, try to think about the way you're speaking to yourself. Yeah, I think that's all really great advice. Consistency is key with anything and it can be Mm -hmm. hard if you feel depressed or you feel anxious. But kind of like you said, when you got more comfortable going into the office for work, you did it more and more. So you got a little bit more and more comfortable each time. So I think that's Mm -hmm. great advice for consistency. And then also how you framed it in a way of doing it for 10 minutes, doing two activities for 20 minutes. Like, I know with my anxiety, if something's going to be a big project or it's going to take up a lot of mental energy, or I think it's going to take a lot of time, then I don't even attempt to do that. So yeah. So for (laughs) anyone out there who's thinking, well, I don't want to meditate or I don't want to commit to all these activities. I'm already so busy. I'm already so exhausted. So reminding people that they can do it in these tiny chunks and it doesn't have to be, you know, you go Mm -hmm. and do anything elaborate or crazy or exhausting it can just be as simple as you know stepping outside and walking around for 10 minutes so I think that's really awesome Mm -hmm. advice for people out there yeah everything can be done small I like I used to get overwhelmed about it too so like just be easy on yourself and try to find like as little time as possible because it will help Awesome. All right. So my final question that I ask all of my guests on the podcast. So this is the search for serotonin podcast. So I like to end on a fun little positive note. So how do you search for serotonin in your everyday life? What brings you happiness? Hmm. Um, I try to just always have fun. (laughs) It sounds simple and it's a little stupid, but I mean, I just don't really know what we're doing on this earth other than to have fun I decided that's that's my take on it (laughs) but I just you know try to find do something like once a day or every other day that just makes you happy like I try to read in the morning or um draw or something you know play with my dog just do things that make you feel good Yes. I love that. It's all about the little things, the little moments. So before I let you go, I just want to let you plug your socials, anything that you want to promote. So where can people find you online if they want to keep up with your journey? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram. It's at the mindful millennial. And that's basically where everything is. I have other platforms, but Instagram's main one and they're all, all my other platforms are linked in my bio. 
Well, thank you so much for being here tonight, Jamie. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story with my audience. Thank you for finally doing a podcast. And I'm so glad that Yay. I was the first that you could come on. I feel very honored. And I really, really, really appreciate this conversation that we got to have. Thanks. This was so fun. Thanks for yeah. inviting me. Yeah. And 